I'm Ron Kaiser. I'm 81 years old. You know what that means? It means that for the past 16 years, I've been able to get all kinds of discounts through AARP. <laughs> I've been able to ride public transportation for free or next to nothing. I can get into almost any movie theater in the country uh, you know, at a reduced rate. But I also have had to pay more uh, or pay the same thing for my Medicare prescription plan as someone who actually uses it, whereas I very rarely have to get a medical prescription. Now, why am I getting these things, good or bad? Is it because of any great achievement that I've done or that my employment status has changed in any way? Uh, have I become needier? Uh, you know, is there some, some award? No, the reality is I pass through a particular age range. At 65, society kind of expects that we're going to fit a particular model. Society kind of paints a uh, picture of the older age ranges, and it's not always a really pretty picture. Um, I first became aware of it about 20 years ago. Uh, let me take you back to that time, uh, which was the time of my first colonoscopy. Um, the, before you say, please don't talk about it, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the procedure or even the prep the night before. Uh, <laughs> but as I said, I was around 60. I think you're supposed to get your first one at like 50, but I work in a medical school, so you're not really supposed to do what you tell everybody else to do. So, <laughs> so I was about 60. Um, the worst part of the thing uh, was really the history taking. Very nice nurse or nursing assistant uh, talked to me about the fact that, or uh, raised questions about, did I have these surgeries or these diseases? Uh, and then she asked a question that was really life-changing for me. She asked, what medications do you take? Now, how do you answer the question if you don't take medications? If she asked, do you take medications, I could have answered it. But how do you answer that? And it suddenly hit me that she was just conforming with society's expectations that you pass a certain age, you're taking multiple medications. Uh, I've seen that or heard that question in many forms since then. What medications do you take? When did you retire? As if I did. Uh, what do you do with all your free time? Uh, as, if, <laughs> as if someone who, you know, works full time and tries to be a pretty good spouse, uh, parent, grandparent, and, and pretty successful at the grandparent part of it, uh, worked out at the gym and so on, like I would have tons of free time. I really don't. I began to really get on a mission to try and change perceptions of how people look at those of us who hopefully you will become at one point older, this really goes back to 1935. At, uh, in 1935, the Social Security Act was signed into being, and that created what essentially became the common retirement age at 65. It's now 67 to collect full Social Security. But at 65, when you could collect Social Security, uh, when you could collect your full Social Security in 1935, the average projected lifespan for a child born in 1935 was around 61. Women a little more than men, just as it's true today. If you do the math, if the projected lifespan is 61, Social Security doesn't kick in until 65, you don't have to do a whole lot of planning for a large population that is going to be in the older adult age range. In fact, there only were about 8 million at that time, compared to around 50 million today who are 65 and older. In fact, in the United States today, there are more older adults over the age of 64 than there are children who are under the age of 5. Now, what's really scary is that in 2035, when hopefully all of us will still be around, there will be more older adults over the age of 64 
then there will be children and adolescents from the age, uh, under the age of 19. Now we know as a, as, as a society, we have a responsibility to care and manage and educate those who are under the age of 19. The expectation is that we'll pay dividends and they will become a resource for us. Do we really want a large number of other people being a, resource, being a burden rather than a resource at the other end of the age spectrum? If not, we ought to be really be doing about something about it. From a practical standpoint, if you take the bus to work or to school, you've got 16 years till 2035 to find a better way of doing it. But when, by that point, we're going to take up all the seats because it doesn't cost us any money for it. Perhaps there can be a different way of doing it, like maybe giving a discount to older adults who take the bus to go to work. Again, we have to rethink how that process becomes. It's one thing for society, but it's also really important that those of us who are aging and those who will age to be aware of the fact that there is strong science behind the notion of the fact that a high level of activity is associated with personal growth and development, uh, improved health, and improved longevity. When I was in graduate school, and many of my colleagues were in medical school, we didn't talk very much about neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to uh, change, grow, rewire itself uh, after an injury, create new neural pathways, new connections, even new neurons that we know at this point. Um, it was kind of assumed that by the time he reached age 30, the brain could do one thing, decline. We now know that that's a myth, not supported by science, and that there are things that we can do to change that. There are three components of a positive and healthy lifestyle that has been proven in study over study uh, in, in recent years. They change, these activities change the brain, they change the body, they change attitudes. First is the health and fitness area. Health and fitness consists of diet or healthy eating, exercise, and such self-regulatory activities as sleep, meditation, yoga, and so on. Intellectual functioning is uh, critically important because intellectual decline is one of the things that most of my peers fear as they get older. But there are things we can do about it. We can't always guarantee that we're going to prevent us from getting uh, Alzheimer's or another form of dementia, but there has been enough evidence to indicate that the, the process can be slowed in some people and eliminated in some. We just don't know enough about it yet. But you want the odds in your favor by staying active intellectually, and there's so many ways of doing it nowadays with the internet, with free or inexpensive classes in college, and so on. Social involvement is very critical. We survived and learned to dominate as a species by being able to work in groups, to be able to create societies, cities, states, nations, and all other forms of social structure. Conversely, we also know now that loneliness is in the older age ranges is right up there with smoking, obesity, and a sedentary lifestyle in terms of being a reducer of longevity. In order to move forward in that direction, uh, it all starts with the mindset, the mindset that I call rejuvenating, the art and science of growing older with enthusiasm. Mindset is the characteristic way in which we approach and do things in the world, and they become habituated over time. So we can have a positive or a negative mindset, a growth mindset, a fixed mindset, and so on. Having an enthusiastic mindset means that we have a great deal of excitement and fervor over, in this case, growing older. 
Now that may seem strange to you because our models are not of active people in the older age ranges, but we really do have to change that. Uh, I have created kind of a pyramid that I call the rejuvenating pyramid to emphasize things that people can do throughout the lifespan to help them maintain skills and competencies and the activity level that help the brain while helping the body. At the lower ranges, and I don't know if you can see it, uh, but at the lower levels of the pyramid are activities that are totally dependent on yourself. You don't need feedback from other people uh, to have a positive growth-oriented mindset, to be able to take in the good that permeates the world. You know, how many, if you're walking from one place to another, how many stop to appreciate the fact that, hey, it's a beautiful day, and really install that feeling. How many appreciate and stop and address the fact that you got somewhere on time? Uh, you know, there's lots going on, much more positive than negative in the world. Do we uh, learn how to appreciate it and stay with that? Then, things like intellectual functioning and diet and exercise, again, are things that can be done without feedback from others. It's a matter of committing yourself, utilizing the science that is available, and not just uh, science per se, but uh, most people probably recognize that it's probably healthier to eat a salad than a fast food burger. Uh, there's a lot of common knowledge out there that can help us grow. It gets a little more complex when we go into the social involvements because it does involve feedback from others. But if you're feeling good about yourself, you're willing to risk the embarrassments or uh, the possible rejections, which always are just temporary, uh, from gestures toward uh, meeting others. An easy way to get around it is to go further up the pyramid, doing good for others, has been shown to produce both a helper's high and also positive brain changes. Now at the top of the pyramid, if you can see it, is goals. From the time that a child enters school, nothing is accomplished without goals. Those who are the greatest achievers in society are people who had goals, went out, set them, addressed them, accomplished them, and were rewarded for them. It makes absolutely no sense then to get to be around 65 or older and decide, hey, I'm going to run out the clock. For one thing, it's not a whole lot of fun. For second thing, you don't have to, given what we know from science nowadays. Uh, and also, the reality is that somebody who is 65, who becomes 65, this year, 2019, on average, can expect to live another 18 years. And that's going to change in, a posit in a, uh, an upward direction over time. 18 years is a long time to, be, uh, to, to devote yourself to doing nothing or making your major activity putting pills into a pill divider or deciding what TV show should we watch tonight or so on. It's not a long time if you've got goals. Continuing to replenish those goals enable you to approach older age with enthusiasm. I would encourage those few of you who I recognize might be a little younger than me to uh, advise anybody, advise any of your friends, and try to remember when you get there. There are three main areas in which to stay active all the time, health and fitness, intellectual area, and social involvements. And if you do that, then in essence, you'll start to grow old at any point in life and develop those habits that are going to keep you growing old in a positive way. Uh, if I knew how much fun old age would be, I'd have grown older faster. I encourage it, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you.